first apply flux. Never have too much. Well, I guess you could technically have too much flux, but if you go a little overboard, won't kill anything. to saturate the board well. You don't need the board to start to bend on you, not a good idea. And then start concentrating on the actual pins of the chip. At least this is the broken chip, so it doesn't matter if you overcook it a little, but If you want, you can grab by one of the pins there in the corner. The chip is actually very brittle. I think this one's been cooked a few dozen times, so therefore why it failed. Don't ink up early though, or you'll break off uh, pads, or rip pads off I should say, and uh, not going to be a good experience. Cindy, you do realize I'm recording a YouTube video, right? No. Well, I am. Can you block me? No. You're there. Well, take me off. Do it again. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to re-solder that chip on just well, to demonstrate taking it back off. why don't you just not do it with any volume? I have to be recording. Okay, now we take the new chip, get a little closer there, just make sure we still got it lined up correctly. Oh, don't forget to take off the old solder and put the new solder on, wherever my desoldering stuff went. Want to be careful with the desoldering wick. You don't want to desolder anything you don't want to take off. So none of the small components. And it doesn't take too much. You just want to get enough of the lead-free solder out of your way. So you can tin all the connections with a new fresh solder. And it'll help if you wait till the soldering tip makes it the right temperature. Passing 300, and 
This is my older soldering iron, so it's not as fast as my other one, but it works. And it glitches out and tells me it's way hotter than it is once it hits temp, so I'm good. Sorry to everyone for the shoddy camera work. It's just a cheapo mount, so it works, though. And a lot of times with your soldering wick, it helps to get a little bit of solder on your actual soldering iron. And we might need a little bit more flux on there. They don't need to be perfectly clean of solder, just most of it. Because obviously lead-free solder will combine with your leaded solder and make a good connection anyways in the end and maybe not break so easily as leaded solder does. You can skip this step if you really want, but it's just much easier if you get rid of the leaded solder. makes it heating it back up later just so much easier okay that's pretty good I'm actually going to switch soldering irons to my better one for the more detailed work This would be my better one, much finer tip. And already hot. Oh, that's what the beep signified. Uh, let's see. And there you go, 60, 60, 40 solder. That'd be the stuff you want.
Yeah. As you see, the one connector there got a little too much solder on it. So what we'll do is just clean off my tip and allow the soldering iron to suck up the extra solder. And we'll keep cleaning. Actually magnifying on those. Okay, there. Pins all separated. And then we slide the new chip into place. some fresh flux also. And let's get all the flux in where it needs to be. And the chips and taps into place. Ooh, a little too much. Usually easier to put the chip in place without a camera in your way, but you know. 